hopefully that last video cleared up all the scripting everything that I've typed in so far here on the video tutorial series that I'm doing now if you are having further problems I've been answering in the comments for the YouTube as best as I can but it's a bit restricted because I can't post any code in there I can't post more than I forget how many characters but I always find that I run out and have to delete so I just jump over to the forums start your search with Unity Forum and then the original post was the Slender Guide so Unity Forum Slender Guide by Alucard J. That's me. So we have that forum page. I'm uploading at the moment. And this does cover this series as well as the last series because I wanted everyone to come over because that guide is old. I'm not saying old for a reason. I was very much new when I even wrote it. So I've, I'm even learning doing this video series. Okay, so there's all the videos that I've uploaded so far. And there's the old series there. But what I draw your attention to is I keep everything on the first post here. This I'll have to update further. By the time you see it, there'll be more links here for all the tutorial videos that I've linked as I've been going along. Some a lot of information on the early assets video. I'm taking requests. And if you go to the very bottom, you can always check what's been updated here on this first post. As you can see, I go up, and as I put things on, I just edit the change log. So you can always come back here and see what's changed since you last visited. Okay, that's the Slender Guide post. And I do have the other one, which you can see here. That's me there. But in case it doesn't come up, Again, start your search string with Unity Forum, and then just the title of this playlist. Okay, and that is my second post. So if you are having problems and I can't give enough detail in the YouTube comments, jump over to the forums here. I've got two pages running. So if you have any queries, concerns, need a little bit of extra help or something that you think I might be able to fill in or elaborate on or clarify, just jump over here. And it's the same format. I have the list of all the videos that I've currently uploaded with all the links. And a bit more information. That's back to basic scripting and the operators using our conditional statements. And again, as before the links which I have to update this one's fairly new so there's no requests and again our change log at the bottom so you can see what's been happened and what has been happening and what has changed in this main body okay so there's the forums that was mainly for me just to let you know that um, I really can't post much detail in the YouTube comments I'm more than happy to help, just jump on over the forums. We can type, we can ask lots of questions, use more than so many characters, and I can post code or code snippets. Like I said in the previous videos, I'm not going to be posting all my codes in written form. I'll give plenty of examples, just like I do in my answers, but if you want the code, you have to do these tutorials. Okay, let's move on. So, that was just our example scene there. Before we can move on with even our slender character or anything else that we're building, we're going to look at another little mini tutorial that I'm going to do. So, in most cases, we have a game object, and we could possibly want to access the components of the other game object. Now, remember, these are all components. A game object and a transform have a special relationship. So we don't have to call on them with the get component. The colliders are a component. We can access them. The renderer is a component. We can access that. Any other components like a rigid body, a light source, 
notes for a couple that we've already dealt with, and scripts. Scripts, whoops. Scripts are actually a component. You see, they are attached to the game object. So once we start learning how to access these components and setting our is gravity and things like that, it's very much essentially the same thing for a script. A script is a component. Now this is one of the reasons why I've been trying to instill the idea of typecasting your variables. Because when you understand that you're typecasting a variable that will only store a certain thing, then it's easy to work with scripts because you can typecast to the name of a script. That's a long-winded example, that one. So just say we had our player, we had the collect papers. This is pretty much what we're going to be doing. So we have a script on the player, and we want to look at the collect papers. Just say we wanted to know how many papers we had picked up so the enemy can get closer. So we can use a get component. We can store a variable, I beg your pardon. So we can say pl variable player script, and we typecast it. And this will be of type collect papers. So that's why I've been really pushing on typecasting. So let's work with the first of those ideas there. As you see, it says remove component, just like any other component. A script is just a component. Okay. So since we're working with the NPC, and we want the NPC to do damage with the player, let's look at how we can use game object find first. I'm even going to set all this up in a new scene. So, no. so I'm going to create a directional light first. I normally I bring that in after the pull, wave it up in the air. And I've already made some prefabs of everything I keep using. So there's our floor back. And I have previously made an NPC and a player. Now this is a separate example, so I'm going to take any scripts off these objects. See, so remove component. Okay, so our player has no scripts, our NPC has no scripts, and our floor has no scripts. Okay, so let's get into it. So the first port of call is always the Unity scripting reference. Unity script reference. Now we are going to deal with game objects. Find. How can we get our script to look for a game object? It's actually a lot of information here, isn't it? But for all the examples, the format is exactly the same. We are looking for a game object, any game object in the scene, with a name. And with the name is the string. Uh, is declared as a string. So let's see if we can make this happen. Create a new script. And this will be my game object find example. Okay, I've made a new scene, so I will save that scene also to my example. Okay, so we're ready to set up. Now, we're going to be working from the perspective of our NPC. So let's just attach a game object find script to the NPC. Okay, so our scene is set up. Let's save the scene once more. So it's all set up. Let's work on what we can do here. First we'll create a variable and just to keep with our convention this will be our target and we are always I have been previously typecasting it to the transform. Okay, just a little bit of quick detail on that. If I cache if I typecast as a game object and I stored a reference to the game object. In the script I'd be writing target.transform. I think I mentioned this much earlier on too. If we access a game object.transform, 
there's already a bit of get component going on behind the scenes. And I did indeed. I showed you in the Unity scripting reference. Okay, so that's why we typecast transform there. Let's move on. Okay, so now we want to find our target. We're not going to drop it into the inspector. We're going to try and make this a little bit smarter. So, our target will equal. Now, first we're looking for a game object. That's the only way we can do it. So, game object dot find. And what are the parameters we pass into this command? We're looking for a name as a string. Now, before we go any further, we want to find our player. So that game object is named player. Game object find. And it's important to make sure you get your capitals right too. Okay, now we're talking about typecasting and different types of components. We want a target as a transform. Currently the game object find will return a game object. Let's just check that with the API again. Okay, so a find by name string, and this is saying this will return a game object. Okay? We want the transform component of the game object. So as I've shown in the raycast when we go through the hit collider game object name, from the game object, I'm going to do dot transform. And that's it. So we've asked the script. The script is asking to look for a game object that is named player. So that is finding a game object right there. Now after we have that game object, we want to access and then store the transform component. Alright, so let's just save that there. This is a public global variable. So we should see that in the inspector. So we highlight our MPC. Let me collapse all these other components because we're not dealing with them right now. Okay, and we can collapse the material a little bit. So here where we are. On our script, we are now going to try and find our player game object and store a reference to its transform. Let's hit play. And there we go, it's populated. Now here's the other groovy thing. If we click on that, watch the hierarchy view as I click on it. See how Unity highlighted that for me? So it's even showing me. Okay, that variable, or what is stored in that variable, if you don't click on it too many times, is over there. Same there I am. So that's about it. There is game object find. Okay, I was just wondering what else we could show with that, but there's game object find in itself. Usually what comes straight after game object find is get component because we usually want to find an object so that we can modify it in some way. So let's create another variable here just so we can see what's happening in the inspector. Now we're going to look at get component. Alright, so my first step is always go to the references and 